Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This is gonna be my new Black Panther 2 video. There are a bunch of Easter eggs and teasers inside the Black Widow trailer. And even though that movie is set during the past, it's also setting up story for new movies after Avengers Endgame in present day in Marvel Phase 4. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We're doing an Amazon giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave all your theories about Black Panther 2 on the video. Thankfully, Black Panther 2 is one of the few movies that has not been shut down or delayed by the virus that's been happening lately. Currently, the movie is coming out May 2022 and is set to open Marvel Phase 5 in a really big way. That's when we're really going to start seeing a lot of the new Fox X-Men characters rebooted inside the MCU, the Fantastic Four characters, all the big stuff that everyone's hyped about. But we actually see some Black Panther stuff happening during the Black Widow trailer. So during the Black Widow trailer that they released just a little while ago, we all saw the Taskmaster has a set of gloves that look like they're made from the same vibranium material that Black Panther's suits are made of, and his claws are also probably vibranium metal. You see him use some of Black Panther's fighting moves. We see him watching footage of all the Avengers, so no wonder he's able to copy all their abilities. But the Black Widow movie also takes place around the same time as the Black Panther movie was happening, right after Captain America Civil War, but before Avengers Infinity War. Just for reference, that was a two year period, because that's how long Hawkeye and Ant-Man were under house arrest. Oh, hey guys. Are my two years up already? And the Black Widow movie might be set during the past, but Marvel is still using it to set up new Marvel Phase 4 story. A really good example is the Weapons Plus program. That's actually Thunderbolt Ross's name for the Super Soldier Serum program in present day. Recently, before the big virus outbreak, they screened some new footage of the Falcon and Winter Soldier series during a Disney investor meeting. And during that footage, Falcon and Winter Soldier referenced the Weapons Plus program. So it's not a big stretch to see Taskmaster with his Black Panther gear and copied fighting moves and a couple of other Black Panther 2 Easter eggs in the Black Widow trailer implying that some of Taskmaster's plans involve things that will cross over into Black Panther 2 in present day. And if it wasn't clear, Black Panther 2 will take place after Avengers Endgame. The only new movies that are coming out right now but are set during the past are the Black Widow movie and the Eternals movie. But the Eternals movie is kind of doing the same thing as the first Wonder Woman movie did, where some of the movie is set in present day and some of it is set during the past to tell their ancient origin story. Most of those characters are thousands of years old. The exception is Kit Harington's Black Knight character. He is just like a normal person that's alive in present day. We'll talk more about that when they drop the Eternals trailer. Also recently, in real life, just before the big virus outbreak, Angela Bassett, who plays Ramonda, Black Panther's mother, revealed that Shuri is also building Black Panther a new suit for Black Panther 2. This is the clip of her talking about that. Everything on set of uh, Black Panther 2, by the way. <sighs> Going along, coming Amazing? along. Yeah. Amazing. You Absolutely. You were telling me backstage that they uh, decided to change the costume of Black Panther. Jimmy, I was telling you that in confidence. <laughs> That's them just hyping up the new tech that Black Panther is going to be using during Black Panther 2. No surprise he would get a big upgrade for that new movie. Just look at Iron Man and all of his movies. He gets multiple new suits sometimes in his new movies, mostly for the purposes of selling new toys. But also because the villain of each movie poses some new challenge that their old armor isn't up to the task. That was the whole reason Shuri gave Black Panther his most recent nano vibranium armor, she made fun of him for how old the suit was, how he had to climb into it like a regular pair of pants and put the helmet on with his slow reaction time. Don't freeze. The nano armor was intended to solve that issue by being instantaneous and connected to his brain through a neural link. With this version of the armor, all he has to do is just think what he wants it to do and the armor will do it. She also added the charge ability that allows it to absorb energy for later use. That was the cool secret function. There have been a lot of rumors about who the villain of Black Panther 2 is, Namor, Doctor Doom, I don't know if any of those rumors are true, but I would love to see them use major new Fox Marvel characters rebooted in the MCU. Like Storm would be amazing in Black Panther 2. In fun fact, had they made the first X-Men movie a couple years earlier before they did, Angela Bassett would have made an amazing version of Storm in that movie. Most of you saw the Black Widow trailer footage and were wondering where Taskmaster would have gotten all that raw vibranium to make his gloves and claws from and where he would have gotten the knowledge of how to make the vibranium weave cloth. Assuming that he fashioned that gear before the events of the Black Widow movie, that would have also been before Ulysses Claw was killed by Killmonger. Ulysses Claw, one of the leading sources of illegal vibranium sales in the world, so that's an easy place for Taskmaster to buy his vibranium. But it's difficult at best to fashion vibranium into shields like Captain America's shield into basic melee weapons. 
But Black Panther and the Wakandans have been working with vibranium for so long that they've learned how to make their clothing and fabrics out of vibranium. How would Taskmaster gain the knowledge of how to do that if not from another spy inside Wakanda or a traitor that he had been able to turn or brainwash? Because remember, the Black Widow program is all about conditioning and brainwashing them into becoming soldiers. Then everyone saw this Black Widow here and just assumed that she was another Russian girl given to the Black Widow program as a child and she just happened to be of African descent. But if you zoom and enhance, look at the tribal tattoos on her face. They're similar to the tribal tattoos you see on the faces of some of the Wakandans in the Black Panther movie. So it's possible that she was born a Wakandan and bears that same special vibranium tattoo inside her lip that allows her to get into Wakanda. And at some point in her childhood, Taskmaster had her abducted and brainwashed her to become a Black Widow so that he could infiltrate Wakanda and gain access to their secrets and technology. And if you look at this room here with this bank of monitors behind them, this is actually inside that giant tower that they blow up later in the Black Widow trailer, the building where Natasha is fighting Taskmaster, then she jumps out and he chases her through the air with a comic book sword. These monitors depict major foreign cities where Black Widows are currently running missions. One of them looks like Wakanda. It's just another example of how even though Black Widow takes place in the past and the movie is all about Natasha trying to end the Black Widow program, the movie is still connected to the other new Marvel movies that are coming up in small ways. In talking more about Black Panther 2 in his new vibranium suit that he's going to get, another reason to upgrade to a new suit is because the world now knows most of his secrets after the events of the Black Panther movie where he made it a point to being open about their culture and their technology with the rest of the world. So you have to imagine by the time Black Panther 2 picks up, most of the world knows what's going on with Black Panther. And once everyone knows your secret, you no longer have that big advantage and you have to adapt. Another good example of that is that during Iron Man 2, Rhodey took Iron Man's old Mark II suit and the military repurposed it into the War Machine suits. Even though they're best friends, Iron Man does like to make fun of Rhodey saying that he always wears his 80s hand-me-down suits. But that's only because every time Rhodey upgrades his War Machine armor, so does Iron Man so that he can stay on the bleeding edge of technology. Black Panther 2 would be doing the exact same thing with Shuri's help, staying on the bleeding edge of technology. Each new movie, something way more advanced to deal with whatever new challenge the villain poses. It also happens in all the Spider-Man movies too. That's why he builds his new suit during Spider-Man Far From Home and he'll probably get another new suit that he'll build himself during Spider-Man 3. If it's going to be open season on Spider-Man during Spider-Man 3 because of what Mysterio did with the help of J. Jonah Jameson, the stealth suits from the comics would do Spider-Man some good. The only other big Easter eggs we have right now for Black Panther 2 are that scene from Avengers Endgame where Okoye is talking about the underwater earthquake off the coast of Africa that happens to be in the same location marked on Nick Fury's map at the end of Iron Man 2. Did a reading on those tremors? It was a mild subduction under the African plate. Do we have a visual? How are we handling it? Nat, it's an earthquake under the ocean. We handle it by not handling it. Since Nick Fury's map was referencing Atlantis, when Okoye brushes off that underwater earthquake like the Wakandans don't care about underwater earthquakes, why would we bother helping out? That's a good way to set up future drama between Namor and Black Panther for an eventual battle in the movies that mirrors their fights in the comics. One of the major beefs between Namor and Black Panther is that they're both kings of their people, they're responsible for the well-beings of their nations, and after a couple major comic book disasters, Wakanda winds up sacking Atlantis, then Namor and the Atlanteans revenge sack Wakanda, so movie Namor could be pissed that Black Panther's people didn't lend the Atlanteans any aid during Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame, and just treat that like an act of hostility, turning into open war in a future Black Panther movie. Namor hasn't been confirmed as the villain of Black Panther 2, but there's so many Namor Easter eggs that we've gotten so far, hopefully they'll do him at some point in the movies. Everyone post all your theories about what they're going to be doing during Black Panther 2 and who you want the villain to be. Congratulations to the winner for my last big giveaway, Mr. Sirius AB. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your details. Everyone click here for my new Deadpool 3 Marvel video and click here for that new Mandalorian Season 2 teaser for Ahsoka Tano. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.